Today I've come to Barley Land's leather shop, which is run by my good friend Ray, and uh, I've asked him to make a couple of uh, sheaves for these little doohickeys that I made. Oh, here's a 50 quid I owe you. <laughs> 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 yeah, <thank> you <laughs> and uh, we're <laughs> and uh, we've got this the squid lit, as uh, I showed people making it and uh, the marks on the back there and this is the uh, one that I forgot about and uh, left in the back of my drawer for 18 months but uh, they're both basically strikers for ferrocene rod this one has got an edge on it and um, uh, it's uh, from the I made a, a knife called a squid and this is like a very small scaled down version but I must admit I got the idea from uh, uh, Sandy of Jackal or Knives he made the um, the bigger one and I thought I'd like that and also um, Funky Prepper had a, a similar thing to this around his neck and I'm afraid I didn't get the man who made it but I thought what a good idea sort of combined the two and uh, I'm here today to get some sheaves made for it so you can hang them around your neck and this is the uh, template for one of them which I believe is for this one and the ferro rod and this one aha this little doohickey here which has just been handed to me is for the squid lit now when I, I'm going to uh, do a little bit of Gorilla filming here if the man is um, uh, ready and he's marked out. I've marked one out, that's one. I've just got to cut a piece of leather so I can do that one. So if you want to carry on filming, I'll just dig a piece out. I'm sure I've got something here I can use. Um, let me see. I've got so much rubbish under here, guys. <laughs> um, you know, it's, uh, it's mind boggling. I'm going to have to take it off of here. We're going to use a bit of um, this. Um, this leather here, okay, we're going to use a bit of this leather here, this is lovely stuff to work with, it makes great um, sheaths and bags and cases, so I'm just going to nick a little piece off of here, and um, if you're wondering what this is, I'm giving up smoking, <laughs> well I'm attempting to give up smoking. <laughs> Best and, way to uh, do that, Ray, never start. Uh, <laughs> Best way to do that is never start. You're dead right. I wish <laughs> I had never started. Um, so this is what I'm going to do here. I'm just going to, I'm just going to chop off a little piece here. I'm going to come in a bit closer to this. Yeah, you want to get in a bit low? Yeah, I'm just going to chop in a little bit here, like that, so that, um, yeah. Yeah, that'll do. That'll do. So... Right, that'll do me. I'm gonna go on there, whack this away. Yeah, I'll put that on there for the time being, that'll do. <laughs> right, I'm gonna mark this out. Okay, we'll go on the back end here. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Let's mark that round. Right. Quickly there. All right. Now we're going to cut this one. This one here. All right. We're going to cut this out. This is always um, fun to do. Be careful though when you whoever start when if you're starting at this game and you getting into leather work, <coughs> be always very careful when you're using one of these things. All right, watch your fingers because it hurts. <laughs> All right, trust me. And, you know, and I, I've. Uh, 
You know, I, I've, uh, I've taken the tips off my fingers off a few times because I was being careless. Do not be careless. And besides, you mess that leather up with all the blood. <laughs> all the claret will just mess it all up, won't it? So just uh, follow your lines nice and carefully. Here we go. Turn your work. Right. Right, so you get a nice even cut there. So that's it. That's that. Okay, so we've got those bits. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, I'm going to mark the I'm going to score, put a stitch groove here, as it uh, helps to uh, protect the stitch. It countersinks the stitch, uh, the thread, so it, you don't get too much wear on it because that's going to be that's going to be uh, sewn. I'm going to normally I would hand sew this, but for the sake of uh, speed i'm going to stitch it on the machine because he's got one because i've got one <laughs> and i don't often use it actually i much prefer to hand sew a lot of the stuff but um i i know I, I just i just have a uh, I, I just have it there and occasionally I, I i do pull it out the machine that is uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is a family show yeah yeah, yeah. Um, this is what i'm doing here i'm, I'm sort i'm burnishing the edges i'm just gonna put this I tend to use water and a plain old piece of soap and it gives you a nice edge to it and then I go out and find the piece of like, bit of canvas, bit of material, nothing special and then just go around it like that. Okay. And then you get what would be normally look like that, which is a rough edge. A bit of soap and water, you get that. Shiny. Shiny. <laughs> All right, so we've done that bit. Now I'm gonna, ch oh, oh, no, what I haven't done is I've just gotta chop, I've just gotta punch out um, a couple of holes, and this is for the eyelets. Ah, oh, right across the knuckle. Um, That's gotta stay in. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's bloopers. Ah, again. What is wrong with me today? No, anyway, now, um, here, your eyelets, got your anvil, usual stuff. I mean, like, you know, sort of there, whack it in there. Um, put your eyelet in. They're a stainless steel eyelet, aren't they? They are a stainless steel one, yeah. These are steel ones. You can get copper ones, you can get yeah. uh, brass ones. Can't be a good uh, bit of stainless steel. Can't, no, bit of stainless steel. Um, yeah, um, so there you go. Ah, oh, here it is, yep. Yeah. You got your anvil. Chop, bomb, bomb. That's in there. That's that's sorted out. So there, that's what's going to the cord. The leather cord will go through there, or paracord, whichever you want to use. Yep, and uh, I'm just showing the people. Just that is perfect. No splitting. No, no frilling. No nothing. Just no. absolutely spot on. It's spot on. Yeah, I do try. I do try and um, achieve that. Try and get it as as neat as uh, I can possibly can. Otherwise, there's no point in doing it. If you're not going to do it right, there ain't no point in doing it, is there? No. Really, quite honestly. And um, now, that's all marked up, ready to roll. Now, in a minute, I'm, what I'm going to do here is, um, is I'm just going to chop that tip off there and then get some... Where's the glue brush? Oh, <laughs> Yeah. Um, also, you're as also, bad as me. I know. It also helps not to be absent-minded because I do put things down and totally forget where I put them. In fact, the other day I was looking for this brush and I'm searching on. You know where it was in my hand. <laughs> How bad is that? I'd like to be able to say oh, I've never done that, but oh, I can't. Yeah, I'm, I'm going ballistic trying to find this this brush, and it's in my hand. I'm going, where's that brush? Where's that brush? I'm holding it like that. And 
then someone popped me and says, by the way, the brush you're looking for is in your hand. <laughs> I feel, ask me if I felt stupid. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I did. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So this one, bit of contact adhesive. I tend to, I tend to when I'm when I'm using contact adhesive, I do thin it down because um, you get better spread with it as well. And I normally, I, I, I normally, do, I thin it down and then. When I'm gluing up, I put a couple of coat, I put the first coat of glue dry, and then I'll do another coat, and then let that dry, and then when I when I put them together, stick like like to a blanket, if you know, you know. Mm, the proverbial. Yeah, the proverbial blanket. Yeah, and um, so um, this is what I do here. This is what I'm doing here. So, and um, now while that's drying I'll put that to one side and now I'll cut this one out okay here we go we're gonna chop this one out now this is the little pouch for the squidlet yeah this is the squidlet pouch I love this I love I love the little uh, holster effect it's got a bit in it you've got to do that yeah you've got to do that yeah uh, Cut one sweep. Normally, when you're cutting curl curves, it's always unless until you're too used to it. I still do the same, but I'm not used to it. It's cutting straight lines along the curve to eventually create your curve. Yeah. All right, and you get a much neater finish in that because if you're not very proficient with a knife and you try and do it like that, follow the line round. You put it into get yourself. Jagged edges and stuff like that. Yeah. So, but even I, I mean, I still, I still do, I still use that system, you going round and just nibbling away at the edges, you know, to create that curve. But when you're doing it every day, it gets easy. <laughs> oh yeah. You know, it's like everything, you know, the more you do it, the easier it becomes, like everything. You know, said the actress to the bishop. <laughs> Oh, now. I'm going to have to censor this, I'm going to see it. No, no, you don't have to censor it, nothing, I ain't said anything yet, have I? <laughs> I'm waiting, I'm okay. waiting. No, 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 it's alright, like, yeah, don't worry, don't worry, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah, you caught me on a good day. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh... So here again, with the soap, with the soap, great stuff, soap. Um, Years ago, I used to use, I don't know, you may not remember, um, a product, a washing up product called Lux. They used to use it for woolens, oh, yeah. flakes. Yeah. And I've still got a jar back there with the original Lux flakes in, all made up. And it's great for putting on edges of leather because when you rub it on, I use my fingers and I spread it on with my fingers. Mm. All right. And then I finish it off with a cloth, with a piece of canvas. And it gives you a great edge. You let it dry. Then once it's dry, go over it with the edge coat. And it stays, it's permanent because it hardens. Once it's dried, it hardens. And um, it's, uh, but they don't make that Lux anymore. I think you'd have to go to the Natural History Museum to get some of that, wouldn't you? <laughs> I think so, yeah. So really what I've got in that jar, I suppose you could class, you could class as an antique. <laughs> Artifact, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and you can't get it anymore. It's a shame because it was such good stuff to work with. So, <laughs> So, especially when, uh, you know, you're doing... Um, yeah, if it don't come do, in a spray bottle now, Ray, you know, uh, if it don't come in a spray bottle, nobody wants it. Yeah, I know. And it's, and it's and, and I still find it the best. And this is something that my father, who used to do leather work, um, showed me about using soap. Because in his day, he had, didn't have the stuff when he was doing stuff. Um, his stuff was fairly simple, like belts gun belts used to make us for us kids, used to make our toys for us and what have you. And he taught me the basics of leather work, i.e. stitching, hand stitching, because he didn't have a machine. I couldn't afford it, basically, he couldn't afford it. And so hand stitching leather, um, edging, burnishing and all that sort of stuff, the finishing touches that are required to make it look, to make it look something special. Because you know? at the end of the day, he's saying to me, no matter what it is you make, if the finish is right, 
that's it, it's everything. The finish is everything. You could make the best piece of life, but if the finishing, the edges and everything are crap and rough, what you got? Some leather just sewn together and thrown together. It's the finishing touch. That's what it's like. And, and if I got it wrong, I'd have to start all over again. He was, he was a bit of a taskmaster, but it served me well. I might give him that. It served me well. So now, there you go. We've got the, um, we've got the edge. That's been done. Let's see that. So you've got the two edges. That's looking right. really, really good, right? Now, what we're going to do here is again, we're going to, I'm going to put, punch a couple of holes. Ah, there it is. And, uh, you know, I mean, like, oh, I should really be using this. It's only because I'm too lazy to reach across and do it. You get it. <laughs> um, right, so this, we're going to put the hole one, hole two, and again. Our rivets, uh, sorry, our eyelets, I should say. All right. I'm going to come down onto your hands and... Okay then. Um, yes. So we're going to go put one in there. One in there. Anvil. Yeah, this anvil thing is so tiny, it's really quite frustrating. not in. Yes it is. Alright, so again, that's what it should end up looking like. Well, yep. Okay, so, find a little touch with the, uh, the edge here. Right, now, mark that up. Glue that, I just put a little mark there so I glue up to that point. Usual glue. Yeah. What is that glue, right? It's um it's like an Evo stick. It's an industrial strength, though, uh -huh. um, that I get uh, normally used for the shoe trade. Uh -huh. But it, you know, once 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 it, it, it adheres, it don't there's go. no way you're going to pull it apart. You really don't. I mean, you. It's good it, enough to walk on. It's good enough for that. <laughs> well, that's it. You know, I mean, and I use it for everything. I use it for all. Um, my God, now. We're going to join this one together because the glue is all nice and... So it's a contact adhesive, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Right, no, I'm normally do. I've got my, my little magic hammer. <laughs> all right. That's contact, all right. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's contacted, okay. And now, we're going to stitch it. So if you'd like to... Follow me. Actually, what we do, we might as well do them both together here, because that's. Because you can smell that stuff. That's really. Come really... on, can you? <laughs> it's re on. really good. <laughs> I've had nights where I've actually floated out of here. <laughs> Look. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Right. So that's. Off in La La Land. Bonded. La La Land. Oh, no, <laughs> kid, kid you not. <laughs> anyway, over here to the machine. To my temperamental machine. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Now. Now, as I said before, we are using this machine. I know you haven't got a machine in there, but you can do everything that we've that you've seen Ray do quite easily. Apart from this, you'd have to hand sew it. But because he's got it, he's going to use it. Actually, if it's all right with you, I would like to at one po some point soon is give you a demonstration on how to hand sew. I've seen lots of times on on various um, web internet sites, internet, YouTube, you know, YouTube, yes, YouTube, where 
the teaching is showing you to stitch now. There's a knack to stitching. It's not just a case of going in and out, in and out. To get a secure stitch, you need to knot each single stitch that you do. Yes. It's not just in and out, because if you don't do that, once if the thread wears and it starts to come undone, then all the stitches will come undone. If you knot each individual thread, mm. all right, and use two needles, all, all right, together, and you sew, always keeping the all at the same angle all the time. Once you start, you mm. keep at that angle. You don't change. And I'd like to say, just just coming in and there, there are we know there are people on YouTube that do it like that. Yeah. But, but um, this is for the people that don't do it like no. that. No, no, that's right. Yeah. Um, and it is because stitching is most important. It, it's got to look good. Mm. And if you don't do it the correct way, it'll look rubbish. <laughs> And this, of course, you've got a big lump of iron like that. Yeah. I mean, this little lump of iron here, right, um, she's a temperamental little baby. And why is it? Oh, I've got it in reverse. That's why. Um, <laughs> she's a temperamental little girl. All um, right. A little bit like my ex-wife. <laughs> and um, You said she was homicidal, not temperamental. Huh? <laughs> you said she was homicidal, not temperamental. Well, she's homicidal and <laughs> Depends what day of the week it is, all right? Depends what day of the week. Now, I've got to do this with this machine. This machine is um, is playing up, unfortunately. Let me just sort this out a sec. I'll just undo this just for a minute. There, one stitch back. I'm gonna come in. Then stitch closer. forward again. Remember to change gear. So now, we're on a roll here because I've sussed it out. <laughs> Fire it up. Wind your fingers. Because I have had an, um, an occasion where I was stitching at one time. This was in my other workshop at my house. And my son burst into the room, into the studio screaming his head off because I think a bumblebee was following him or chasing him and because I was so busy looking at him I stitched my fingers together <laughs> god did that hurt <laughs> and um obscenities were flying about all over the place I bet they were yeah oh big time right so that bit's done okay so now oh oh look a nice neat stitch there Keith look yep didn't bite you no, it didn't bite me. What a turn up for the book. That's a first. Um, <laughs> right, I just need some scissors. And I always seem to forget to carry take my scissors with me. You stay there. Keep the camera rolling. I'm going to tap dance across the floor. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right. So, that's number one. We'll trim that off in a minute. So, that's it. Okay. We'll trim that in a minute. Where did I put the other one? It's over there. Oh, right. Of course it is. It's only testing. Just testing. <laughs> just testing. Um... I tell you what I do need. Um, what I haven't done is I haven't scored this. So just let me show you. This is it. This is a professional standard stitch groover. Great piece of kit. All right, invaluable. And always, if you get a nice, you get a nice neat stitch with it. And here we go. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. So you get that. Follow your line. Bob's your uncle. <laughs> so they say, not that I've got an uncle called Bob. Um, right, so here we go. I normally go stitch forward. Drop that. So that's in. Whack that into reverse. So we go back one. Right, bring it forward again, because this is an old machine. This is a very temperamental machine. Right, we run the roll, and then we kick off. What's this machine, about 1940s? Yeah, oh yes, yeah, the 40s, mate. Good guess. Oh yeah. I can um, see by the uh, writing and uh, 
lithography on the top of it. Yeah. It's pretty old. Yeah, oh yeah, it's, a, it's an old machine. And um, this is um, this is a 45K 89 cylinder arm walking foot <laughs> machine. Yeah, I'm sure we all got that. <laughs> yeah, well, then that's the model. That's the name of the customer. What are you talking about? This is the... <laughs> <laughs> this is the model of the machine, that's what it, and it's got. It, I, mean, I don't know that because it's actually written on the side. Here. <laughs> I was going to say, Adam. <laughs> yeah, I thought you'd been. Oh, he's being clever now. No, I'm not really because it's all written here. Um, no, this is a very old machine. It's, um, it's, obviously. I thought you'd been to school for a minute. Uh, yeah, no, I haven't been to school for years, mate. <laughs> but um, this, um, this machine. Is a good old beast. The temperamental because she's old. Yeah. Um, and um, you know when the, when she's running really well, she runs really well. Um, at the moment, I'm wait. I'm waiting for a new foot. I need a new foot for it. I'm waiting for that to arrive. Um, and it should get serviced every year. If you're wondering what this is, that's a reservoir for liquid wax. Ah. That goes in there to lubricate the thread. You can see inside there. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah. And it lubricates the thread, so so it helps to when the stitch to tighten up, and you, and you get a you get a great little thing. Um, does that come as a separate item? Or no, it's a separate item. I found that I found that in a um, separately. God, I can't even remember where I got that from. Um, but. Uh, it's a good little doohickey, though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's ideal because it does lubricate. Normally, I have it for like I've got, I've got to. But this, unfortunate, they don't make the liquid wax anymore that they use. So oh. I'm, and I've had a, I've had a gallon of it for over twenty years. I've had this gallon of wax, and so it lasts a long time. It does last a long time, and it's great stuff to use because um, it does help. You know, if that was a dry stitch on this old machine, it wouldn't come out as neat as that. No. I'm going to zoom in on that because yeah. that, that is that is gorgeous. Right. But a wet, wet bit, and if it had been a dry, say if it was dry, the stitches would not look as good. And because it's lubricated, it helps so you get that extra little tightness, little tweak on the thread. It works. You know, sort of like I set it up and do You know, it just just looks good. As I've said to people in the past. I used to work with leather, but yeah. I'm a Ray knows that what the reason why I can't do it anymore. I can't keep my hands still. Uh, no, no. Um, but, you know, now, um, because I don't have the space here in this workshop to... <laughs> so, we haven't got the clapperboard, you know? No, no. no. But anyway, that's it. I've just done the edge on that. Yep. All right. There used to be big gaps in my, my movies. Anything with my name on it has got big gaps yeah, in it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's a really good oh, look at that. Does that not make that look? All right, so that's that. Absolutely now, brilliant. we've got this little yellow one to finish off. Now, that one's there. That's done. Yep. Now, we just trim off the thread on this one. And... Um, Get that one there. Okay, now get me a trusty little sanding board because unfortunately I don't have the space here in the workshop to set up a um, belt sander. Yeah, a belt sander and stuff. I just don't have the space because I share. I share with a a, a friend of mine. And you wouldn't um, want the dust everywhere either, no, would you? Not, exactly. not in a not on not, not when she, she's an artist, the yeah, other side. She's an artist, she's a wonderful artist. I'll tell you her name. Check out her name is Hazel Williams. She does children's illustrations. Wonderful lady, wonderful artist. Check her out. I should be a TV presenter, really, <laughs> I'd be good at this. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, and uh, so now, just just giving the edge a little touch up here, just to um... yeah, about that TV presenting. I think you're going to need a better cameraman. <laughs> yeah. now, um, so here we go. That's that. Bit of this. Bit of the magic soap. You know, a lot of the books 
that um, I've still got when I started to do things like leather tooling and carving and things like that that I got into a later year, you know, they show books and when they when they come to this edging, you know, and burnishing the edges, all this, oh, some water, put some water on the edge, bit of canvas, rub it up. It, it worked, but it's not as good as when you actually just, it helps to lubricate. If you put that soap on and give it a good coat in, whenever there's any little, little imperfections in the edge, you know, my little thing, the soap covers it in. It just builds it up and just go, keep going, and eventually, and then when you start rubbing it all up, it's like the cloth, it polishes it so you get a nice even surface. It's like bulling your boots, isn't it? Just like, doing it. And, yeah, and you know about that, and I know about that, because I did that for my dad. <laughs> I used to bull his boots for him. Yeah. You know? And this is what you do, you know, it, it, the soap helps to, it packs. Yeah. It packs any little gaps, any little hairline, yeah. you know, um, little gaps that might be there. Um, and you just... Yeah, it, it is a wonderful edge. I'm going to come in close to that because you can actually right. see this. It's really a good little tip. All right. You should, don't do what I do. I spit on it. Don't, because it tastes foul. <laughs> uh. Uh, that is really like bullying your boots. Yeah. You're like, puh. <laughs> polish. The amount of times I've done that, gone like that and put me through that and then got uh, <laughs> polish in my mouth. Oh, no yeah. good. No good. Right, so there you go. Oh, look at that. Well, Ray, thanks for that because that is some, uh, that is brilliant and uh, I think the people are going to appreciate what goes into these. It's uh, this, uh, this was some, uh, one of the little things that we decided to do because it's it's something that everybody can do with uh you know if you've got a hole in a and some some thread you can do it oh yeah but uh and some leather obviously but um this yeah, it normally helps to have the leather yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah and um uh as you see so that is right i'm gonna give him the things to put into it just right. to show you so just, that one we'll go Put that in, just drop that in the side there. And this one on, to, on there next to it. All right. And then... Push it down because it's, it's a little bit tight at the moment. Yeah, it it's a little bit up. tight, but it will loosen up. All right. And uh, it does loosen up. And um, like so, it's just because the glue is just... Well, the edges are still glued up, but that will, that will loosen up. There you go. Lovely. Look at that. And it's nice and tight in there. They're not going to yep. slop all over the place. Fits nice and tight as a German fella. Fits <laughs> <laughs> nice and tight. Yeah. <laughs> I'll give you that one. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. oh, I love what you know, Kev. You've got a great sense of humour. You have to have to put up with me. Anyway, look. There you go. Lovely. Right, that's one. And there's the and other. There. So there's the striking steel, the arrowhead striking steel, and the squid lit. All done and dusted. Beautiful. Thanks for watching. See you later.